Welcome back to The Line. Laura Paskus pointed out in her Our Land Weekly newsletter this week that many of us are overwhelmed by a deluge of bad news. It was just three months ago that statues and monuments across the country were being removed, sometimes by force. It can seem more like a lifetime ago, and now some people are asking questions about what's really happened to the statues that are either still there or were removed, pending some as yet unexplained plan for relocation. In Santa Fe, Mayor Alan Weber removed a statue of Don Diego de Vargas in June. He called it a, quote, a moment of moral clarity, end quote, back then. But Julianne, as your former colleague at the New Mexican, Daniel Chacon, pointed out, that moment has taken a little bit. Do you see meaningful action at City Hall on this quite yet? Yeah, you know, um, it, the Santa Fe reporter pointed that out, too, a few days before that story ran in the Santa Fe, New Mexican. Love the correction. Um, original people who pointed it out are those who advocated for removal of the obelisk and removal of some of the other monuments to um, the violence that exist in the Santa Fe community. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like that you pointed out this idea that Mayor Weber uh, talked about moral clarity and how clear it was and how quickly he made a decision mm -hmm. um, three months ago. And he made, made a promise and he in fact took an action that some people think is pretty cowardly and that he ordered city workers to scoop up the statue of Don Diego de Vargas um, just as the sun was coming up. Right. And we learned in fact that earlier that night in the dead of night, uh, there were people working on the plaza trying to remove the obelisk from the plaza in the middle of the night. And we've gone from that drastic quick action to three months later, nothing. You know, we've had promises of these commissions and, um, you know, kind of vague um, information from the city about problems with this plan. Mm -hmm. um, but the mayor's not granting interviews to explain this delay. Um, and, you know, it's let, let, really let me, kind of Julianne, let me ask let me ask you about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that the mayor wants to start. What, what, what is that? What, what, what is he looking to do? Who makes it up? Is it a community dialogue? What, nobody knows, huh? Oh, boy. No, I mean, I, you know, I, I feel like we're, there were lots of things that were said three months ago, but right. to try to figure out what's happening based on those statements seems like a, a fool's errand at this point. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about what, uh, you know, is it a historic monument? Does it belong to the state? Does it belong to the city? You know, who owns the obelisk in particular? Right. Um, and, you know, I, I did a story back when I was on the beat at the Daily Paper about all the different things that have occupied that public space that we now know as the plaza that now holds the obelisk. And at one time there were um, crops growing there, living mm -hmm. things. And I'm of the opinion that that might be the best uh, way to go, to get something um, alive and uh, not politically loaded um, in that spot for the benefit of our city. Amazing. Yeah, I, I could imagine. That's an interesting idea. Hey, Tom, I got to ask you this. We've got some polling out from research and polling about how folks feel statewide about the removal of statues. And it was interesting. I mean, I, maybe to some, you know, 53 percent of us oppose moving the Oñate statues across New Mexico. What does this polling say to you when you see this? Uh, it says because it's the, you know, the polling is so close and I'm looking at it as well over here, here it is, is uh, it, it's so it's 53% is obviously a majority, but there's so many different areas uh, like the, the one item that jumps out to me is the regional breakdown mm -hmm. in Northwest New Mexico, where you have 69% who oppose yep. changing names or, you know, changing the status quo and 25% uh, uh, not. And knowing just that, you know, the diversity of Northwest New Mexico tells me that there's a lot of reconciliation and discussion that needs to take place in Northwest New Mexico. Mm. And even Brian Sandroff said that there was an underrepresentation of Native Americans uh, due to uh, the lack of a you know, voting profile uh, amongst, amongst that group. So, right. you know, I, I think that there's, it's, it gives us a snapshot that says, there's a lot more conversation that needs to take place. And it's always great to hear Julianne's uh, uh, take on Santa Fe. I just, it's, to me, it's always a breath of fresh air. So thanks, Julianne. Love it. Hey, um, Laura, in, in Albuquerque, we've taken a cautious approach here. We, the mayor's taken a pretty cautious approach uh, to the situation. We had our own situation. Someone got shot 
at our own statue down here. Any sense of where the, where the city should be currently on this idea? We've also got a group, it's not quite the same as called uh, uh, in Santa Fe, but there's another group looking to get some dialogue started that's under the mayor's idea here too. Is it going to take dialogue or something more than that? Well, it's definitely going to take a lot more dialogue. You know, it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear um, Tom's comment about how there needs to be more, um, you know, more discussion. There's more discussion to be had, and I, I agree with that. But, you know, so much of this is cultural and, and mixed in with race identity and race relations. Um, you know, the whole discussion reminds me of a book that was published by um, one of my friends and mentors, who is actually one of my law professors, um, Laura Gomez, she was a professor of law also for a while at UNM, is now back at UCLA. When I, when I first met her, I was a student there. And she published a book called Manifest Destinies, The Making of the Mexican-American Race, where she talks about some of the racial identity issues in northern New Mexico and, mm -hmm. and really sort of the way that, that the Mexican race developed in New Mexico specifically. It's very interesting because, um, you know, even when I grew up in southern New Mexico, um, you know, everyone was Mexican. The word Mexican wasn't a bad word. When culturally, when you move to northern New Mexico, when I moved to Albuquerque, actually, and I referred to myself as Mexican, that was seen as like, oh, no, you're not Mexican, you're Hispanic, which was funny to have, you know, white people telling me that <laughs> as if it was a bad word or something. Um, but there's a long history of race issues and racial identity that is behind that sort of um, mixed messaging to people who aren't part of culturally part of these groups. So I'm not surprised to see that 69% of the people polled in northern New Mexico opposed changing uh, the status quo and the okay. idea that that these statues should be removed, mainly because to them, this is a source of pride. There's been a long history of um, instilling in them this, uh, this oral tradition, if, if you know, for lack of a better term, I'm not sure if it was actually taught in school, but it's certainly a very strong oral tradition that they're Spanish, that, right. you know, it came from Spain and all of that. And so there's going to be a lot of pushback to statues of um, conquistadors coming down, you know, and then you juxtapose that with um, the native cultures um, that see that as really oppression and, um, you know, killing. And it's a, it's a symbol of, of just very terrible things that happen to their people. So it's going to take quite a bit of discussion. I agree with Tom. Um, but I don't know that there's going to be a lot of minds to be changed in northern New Mexico. And so I think it's important that there be public input. And one of the biggest concerns that people have in Santa Fe, for example, there was a vigil held um, last week, I believe, on this issue, is that they feel like there it hasn't been enough public input That's when right. some of these issues are removed. Mm -hmm. But I should mention it's called the Race, History and Healing Project from Councillor Clarissa Pena. That's what's going down here. Apologize to the council there. We'll have to leave it there this week. Thanks to all for our panelists and digging in and offering their opinions.